Well, hello. I'm Tamara, and today we're going to talk about do you think you're ADHD or OCD? OCD is obsessive compulsive disorder, ADHD is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Those are two disorders that people are in general familiar with. And there are more people that claim to be ADHD and OCD than anything else. And what's interesting is there are people who actually have those disorders that need to be diagnosed with them and they never get diagnosed. And yet there are people that are walking around adults. I hear that all the time. I'm ADHD. Oh, I'm so OCD, but they've never been diagnosed with it. So. Do you think you have that disorder? Comment below if you always make those comments about yourself, but you've never been diagnosed, but you think that you could possibly be. And I'm gonna tell you what the criteria is for these. I'm, I'm gonna start with ADHD. Now what's interesting about ADHD is you may look at these criteria and you might say, I fit all of those. But I think you need to factor in some other things. I'm going to read to you some of the criteria and then I will tell you why you may not be this. Okay. So if you're a child, you have to fit six or more. If you are 17 or older, you are required to have five of these symptoms. So often fails to give close attention to details or make careless mistakes in schoolwork, at work or during other activities. Work is inaccurate. B, you often have difficulty sustaining attention in tasks or play activities. You have difficulty remaining focused during lectures, conversations, or lengthy readings. C, often does not seem to listen when spoken to directly. Mind seems to be everywhere, even in the absence of any obvious distractions. D, often does not follow through on instructions and fails to finish schoolwork, chores, or duties in the workplace starts tasks but quickly loses focus and is easily sidetracked. E, often has difficulty organizing tasks and activities. For example, difficulty managing sequential tasks. F, often avoids dislikes or is reluctant to engage in tasks that require sustained mental effort. G, often loses things necessary for tasks or activities. H, is often easily distracted by extraneous stimuli. I is often forgetful in daily activities like doing chores, running errands. I can hear some people going, yep, yep, that's me, that's me. <laughs> okay, so slow down just a minute. I can see some adults who clearly have ADHD. You can see it. And then there are some people who they may not show it in situations where there's not a lot of stimulation, but when they get in a school situation, then you can see it because they are required to focus and they're failing everything and they're not succeeding and it's just blaringly obvious. So it can be a little tricky. However, let me make a case against why you're probably not ADHD. How did you do in school? Did your teachers often tell you all the time that there was a problem? Did you turn in assignments late in school? Did you forget to turn things in? Did you have problems being disorganized? Did you, were you forgetful? That is the number one thing that you need to look at, okay? So if you are able to succeed in school and do well, then you need to take this off the table, okay? I can look at some of those things and I can say, oh, that fits me to the T. Like, for example, when I was in school, I was always a big daydreamer. My mind always wondered. I, and I did have to fight that. I really did. Because my mind would just be wandering off somewhere. So in some cases, some people might say, oh, that's, you know, ADHD, inattentive type, you, you're not able to focus. Some people might, and, and it was always with reading comprehension. So when people say, oh, this person has a, they, they need to be uh, evaluated for special ed because they can't, uh, when they're, they can't comprehend very well. I always question that a little bit because that was me all day. I need to reread something about three times before I grasp it. Now, on the other hand, there were times in school where I would make straight A's. So I could compensate, I could overcompensate or compensate 
for that issue. So there would be no reason for me to be diagnosed with something like that. If you look at our society, especially in the United States, all we do is work, 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 work. I mean, it's just overkill. Like there's stuff on top of stuff. It's no wonder everybody can probably fit that diagnosis. Why? Because there's so much interference with you getting your job done. There's so much overstimulation. There are so many other things you can do. There's so many ideas. You're keeping up with all your social media things. I mean, it's, I mean, if you have all those things that you are juggling, you are going to have a hard time focusing and concentrating on the basic everyday things that you need to get done in your life. Your brain is scattered. I feel like your brain is like a box. Once you fill it up so much, it starts to scatter. So before you say you're ADHD, look at all the things that you have going in your life. Is it a lot or are you just doing the basics? You go to work, you go home and you don't have anything else. At work, there's no interference. There's not people all over you giving you a thousand more things to do. You can just focus on your job. I mean, think about those types of things. Are you overloaded and it scatters your brain? Also, you might wanna think about, are you a creative person? You are an idea person, so you enjoy playing around with lots of ideas. That does not mean that you're ADHD. That means that you probably need to prioritize and figure out, okay, what, what's, what's most important here? So if there are always things that you say you never get to or you never get done, why? Why not? Are you focusing on those things? Are you trying to get those things done or are you just putting them aside? Putting them aside for something that's more pleasurable is not ADHD, okay? So just think about your life. Some of you that say you're ADHD, you are not. And then there are other people that really need the help. They're gonna struggle and suffer for the rest of their lives because they never, no one ever addressed that issue. No one ever took care of it. I do feel bad for those people because you're, they're never gonna be on the same playing field as everybody else, okay? So let's just take this diagnosis a little bit more seriously than what we than what we do. We often say we're ADHD because we're scatterbrained by choice. <laughs> and I don't mean to say that lightly. I mean to say sometimes we prioritize things that are more fun that we will enjoy over things that are not. Sometimes we have other people running our lives in ways that, you know what, they need to give me 50 feet, like get back, okay? Like get out of my lane and then I won't be so scattered. Let's talk about OCD. This is another one where people love to say, I'm OCD. It's just become a common phrase. But let's again, like we did with ADHD, let's look at the criteria in the DSM-5 and then you can make a decision on whether or not you're really OCD like you think you are. Okay, so you have to have presence of obsessions, compulsions, or both. Obsessions are defined by one and two, okay? So one, recurrent and persistent thoughts, urges, or images that are experienced at some time during the disturbance as intrusive and unwanted, and that in most individuals cause marked anxiety or distress. And number two, the individual attempts to ignore or suppress such thoughts, urges, or images, or to neutralize them with some other thought or action by performing a compulsion. And then it says compulsions are defined by one and two. Number one, repetitive behaviors such as hand washing, ordering, checking, or mental acts, for example, praying, counting, repeating words silently that the individual feels driven to perform in response to an obsession or according to rules that must be applied rigidly. Or two, the behaviors or mental acts are aimed at preventing or reducing anxiety or distress or preventing some dreaded event or situation. However, these behaviors or mental acts are not connected in a realistic way with what they are designed to neutralize or prevent or are clearly excessive. You must meet the remainder of these criteria in order to fit this diagnosis. B, 
The obsessions or compulsions are time consuming. For example, they may take more than one hour per day or cause clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. C, the obsessive compulsive symptoms are not attributable to the physiological effects of a substance like drug abuse or other medical conditions. D, the disturbance is not better explained by symptoms of another mental disorder like excessive worries, which is generalized anxiety disorder, etc. I won't read all of those. So those are the criteria that you have to meet in order to have OCD. And I think the cavalier way in which people say it, I think they don't mean it in a, a way that is disrespectful. I think what they're trying to say is, I get obsessive over certain details. I'm meticulous. I'm an A student. I like to do things right. It's gotta be perfect. Like, hey, you don't wanna get on my bad side because I like doing things the right way and I overdo it when it comes to being perfectionistic and getting things right and I want things done in a sort of certain way. That's what they mean. Now, can that be aggravating and stressful to some degree? Yes, but there's a reward at the end when you get things done the way that you want them done. So in, in some ways, what they're really meaning is I'm perfectionistic. I like to do things in a certain way uh, with a certain aim. People who have obsessive compulsive disorder, they feel terrible. They feel bad every day. It's a really, it's a not fun disorder because you're going to have intrusive thoughts that are very aggravating and painful to have that are making you you know, okay, I have to get out of the bed a certain way and I have to go back and check the door 30 times before I go back. My hands are chapped because I wash them and before I leave out of the bathroom, I wash them five more times and they're chapped. It's not, uh, I touched something. I mean, you, you can have some tendencies, but it's not just the kind of, eh, I'm kind of a germ person. Like I'm a germ person. I don't, you know, if you if we shake hands, I mean, even before COVID-19, I want to wash my hands afterwards. I mean, but I don't want a cold. You know what I'm saying? But it's not an obsessive, like, recurrent, persistent thoughts and urges that, that are intrusive and telling me that, you know, something terrible is going to happen to you. Something bad is going to happen to you if you don't hop 10 times or if you don't turn your plate in a circle 12 times before you take each bite. I mean, they have rituals and things that they're performing in order to keep certain bad things from happening. Everybody has moments when they're like, okay, did I lock the door? Did I shut the garage down? You might do that every day just because you're stressed and you're not paying attention and your, your mind is somewhere else. But it's not an obsession. It's not a compulsion. It's not these interfering thoughts that are entering your head and driving you absolutely insane, telling you what a horrible person you are and you better do, you know, it's, this, this is on another level. No one would want this disorder, nobody, because it really interferes with their daily living in a way that is very painful and stressful so just want to shed light on some people who think that they are OCD. And by the way, uh, check out my video on OCD personality disorder and OCD. I did that. It's under the personality disorder section. And that will better explain to you what you're talking about. Because a lot of times what people are really actually referring to is the personality disorder, which is completely different. But some people with the personality disorder also have OCD with it, but that's another story. That real rigid, straight in a line thing, that's more of the personality disorder, which people are not familiar with, which is also fascinating. Let me know what you're interested in as far as psychology, and I will do it for you. And be sure to subscribe to my channel so you know when new videos pop up, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.